Tonight on News 5 Live. The Bersenu administration goes to the House with a motion to approve $76 million in supplementary allocations to cover BISL debt. Albert Area Representative Tracy Panton calls for a ceasefire on infighting within the UDP. And Vulcan representatives meets with the Ministry of Sustainable Development on Thursday. The Senio says government will not readily dismiss the company's proposal. These stories and more coming up on News 5 Live. I'm always on the go and the country is my home. So when I want to get away from it all, I immerse myself with my favorite movies, all from the new Smart Stream app. It's easy to use this service. Purchase your movies from the app and use your mobile data, Smart Stream data packages or Smart Broadband to stream and enjoy. Be like me and stream on the go with Smart Stream. like Kohler, welcome GE Appliances, welcome Oran Windows, welcome tiles from around the world, welcome Sherwin Williams Paint and Coating. Visit us today at mile 3 on the Philip Golden Highway or call us at 223-3768. Design Depot, all in one place. Say hello to DigiTV. Step into the world of digital entertainment. DigiTV gives you access to 100 plus channels on your TV or your mobile device at unbeatable prices. Take your shows with you wherever you go. It's a new level of freedom. Enjoy your favorite entertainment, sports, family, Latin, and local channels. No more fighting for the TV remote. You can access whenever you want from two devices at the same time. DigiTV is for everyone. And with the fastest fiber and mobile networks in the country, you are guaranteed to have the best experience ever. There's no installation required. Sign up for the Max Package for only $40 monthly and get the first two months for just $30. For a limited time, get 50% off a Fire Stick when you sign up. Download the DigiTV app from the Android or Apple stores. Just WhatsApp us at 608-8888 to sign up. It's that easy. Watch, experience, enjoy DigiTV today. My name is Dr. Marcelo Coy, and I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist at Belize Medical Associates. Pregnant women are at risk of getting infected with the COVID-19 virus and are at higher risk to develop severe complications and illnesses. The COVID-19 vaccine is safe to use during pregnancy. All pregnant women should get vaccinated to protect themselves and their newborn. Visit any vaccination site and get vaccinated. is coming to an end, so let's end it with a bang. Come see kids from all over the country while they take center stage to show off their talent on Open Your Eyes Summerfest 2022. That's right, mark your calendars Friday, August 26 at 6.30 a.m. at Channel 5 on Coney Drive. Come and start your on and write with kids singing and dancing. Also, come take advantage of great food, 
entertainment, and loads of back-to-school giveaways, including gifts for the first 100 kids who enter the fest. And the best thing of all, entrance is free. So what are you waiting for? Set your alarm and pencil in that date because Summerfest 2022 is one event you don't want to miss. is brought to you by the Belize Bank Limited. Our country, your bank. Good evening and welcome to News 5 Live for Wednesday, August 24th. I am Sabrina Daly. The government of Belize has agreed to settle, settle with the Belize International Services Limited for damages caused by the acquisition of the company in 2013. At the time of the acquisition, BISL was managing the Belize International Ships and Companies Registry. In, two, in 2003, the government of Belize extended its profit-sharing contract with BISL for a period of 10 years to 2013. In 2005, the government of Belize and BISL extended its contract for a final time from 2013 to 2020. However, in 2013, the Barrow administration moved to acquire BISL. In 2020, the CCJ made a ruling against the government of Belize in favor of the company. Today, inside the House of Representatives, Prime Minister John Bersenio introduced a supplementary appropriation bill seeking approval for 38 million U.S. dollars to be paid to BISL as a settlement for damages. At the time of the takeover, in similar fashion, to so many other UDP policy decisions, then Prime Minister Barrow assured the country that the cancellations of BISL's agreement was based on flawless legal advice. Flawless legal advice. His words, not mine. Words that he had used over and over and end of the cost of this country millions of dollars. He boasted and assured us, assured every one of us, that government would not be exposed to damages. And when he mentioned it here in the National Assembly, his ministers were banging the table, you know, agreeing with him that it's not going to cost us and we are taking this back. Sure enough, BISL sued for damages. They lost at the Supreme Court, no surprise, and then they lost at the Court of Appeal, again, no surprise. Because for some reason, Mr. Barry used to win all of his cases in the Supreme Court and win all of his cases in the Court of Appeal. But guess what? Whenever he goes to the CCJ, what happened to him? He loses all of the cases. And guess what happened? Guess what happened, leader of the opposition? In July of 2020, three months before the UDP was kicked out of office, the CCJ delivered a striking decision in favor of BISLs and against the UDP government. <coughs> Flawless legal advice. According to Prime Minister Brisenio, the government of Belize will make a lump sum payment to cover the BISL settlement. He explained that $11 million will be paid in Belize currency, while the rest of the payment will come from the Central Bank Reserve. Of course we are different. We are nothing like those on the other side, that's for sure. So apart from settling this public liability at a deep discount, government plans to draw down on its domestic financing account to pay the settlement. The cost of domestic financing 
in an emergency such as this would be almost six, um, be almost half of the statutory post judgment rate of 6%. Just let me explain. Government borrows at 3.5%, but the court orders you to pay at 6%. It's a no-brainer. The better make we borrow from myself and pay three and a half percent, I don't have the the the, um, the courts tell us that we have to pay six percent. So, if had we continued fighting, and the government opt for the terms with BISL, then six percent would have been applicable. So, if we may set up with BISL and say, okay, we're going to pay you in terms the interest rate would have been 6%, not 3.5%, 3.5%. That is why we've decided it's best we pay you off and we save an interest that what government pays itself or pays the central bank. In other words, the reason we're paying off this settlement in a single payment is because the difference between the interest rate that BISL would demand and expect and what the courts would award, which is a 6%, compared with the government's current domestic borrowing is almost half percent. Half of what the courts would have had us pay. Fortunately, Mr. Speaker, the central bank reserves, thanks to the country's stellar macroeconomic performance, are more than sufficient for government to source the foreign exchange necessary to satisfy the US dollar component of this discounted settlement. Leader of the opposition, Moses Shine Barrow, accused Prime Minister Brisenio of playing the Piper's tune. Following PM Brisenio's contributions on BISL settlement in the House, the leader of the opposition rose to question the Prime Minister's motive behind the settlement payment. Barrow, on the other hand, agreed that the debt must be paid. I'd just like to give the Prime Minister a round of applause for that outstanding performance. Uh, man, I've never seen someone sing for their supper that way. I, I have to take my Grammy Award and give it to you. You know, I, I retired. Um, but if I, if I was still rapping, I would have done one Creole rap call if this does not sing for your supper. When I came into the house advocating on behalf of the Belizean people, those in Port Loyola, those on the south side of Belize who are in desperate need of employment, who are in desperate need of economic development, the Prime Minister accused me of singing for my supper. But the same owners of Waterloo own BISL. And my goodness, you're weeping and mourning. And it begs the question, because I know your business partners with the owners as well, you or your brother or your family, but the Belizean people really need to see you for what you are. But Mr. Speaker, as far as this appropriation is concerned, I agree that we must follow the rule of law and we must pay our debts. The CCJ has made a decision. Also on the opposition side, Tracy Panton, area representative for Albert, chided the Briseno administration over the lump sum payment to BISL. Panton contended that the government of Belize has been unable to identify funds to hold a cannabis referendum and to lower the cost of fuel. Yet, it is able to settle a 38 million U.S. dollar debt in a single payment. Mr. Speaker, my constituents would say that this administration, the tech wave, 
But I say to you, Mr. Speaker, that I think they're bipolar. The government consistently comes to this house for more money for public spending. Loan motion after loan motion after loan motion so we can meet our obligations to the Belizean people. But 15, 16, 17 loan motions in the past year and a half, I, I stopped counting millions and millions of dollars because we need the money for the stop gap to meet the obligations of the Belizean people. But yet, Mr. Speaker, in one payment, we can settle a 38.5 million US dollars, 76 million dollars on the backs of the Belizeans. Wasn't it just the last House meeting, Mr. Speaker, when the government coerced the churches to say we will put a hole on the referendum on marijuana because we can't afford the five million. But yet, Mr. Speaker, we can five seventy-six million dollars to meet this debt obligation in one payment, not in a true payment plan. Not in installments that will be less burdensome for the Belizean people in one payment. Prime Minister John Briseño also sought to explain why Courtney Coy LLP will be paid handsomely as a result of the BISL settlement. As attorney for the claimant, Courtney Coy LLP will receive close to nine hundred thousand U.S. dollars in litigation cost. Tracy Panton raised the matter during the debate. P.M. Bersenio, on the other hand, insists that Courtney Coy had nothing to do with the settlement. Do you know, Mr. Speaker, who are the attorneys for the claimant? Courtney and Coy. The last time I checked, Mr. Speaker, two of the principals for Courtney and Coy are government ministers. One who sits in the office of the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, who have to negotiate this settlement agreement. Now, if that's not a conflict of interest, Mr. Speaker, I don't know what is. No, no, no point of order. I think it's regrettable that the member from Albert is talking, um, she, um, because she's imputing um, the point of order is that you're speaking without knowing what to talk about. Documentation show that uh, Courtney uh, Coy law firm will be collecting close to $900,000 as a result of this settlement. Uh, the optics of it looks bad. Well, I don't know how you could say anything about ops or any optics because we have nothing to do with that. Whatever um, Belize Bank and um, Morgan and Morgan want to pay um, Courtney and Coy or anybody. That is their business. That is being paid out of the um, $38.25 million US. As I said, it's final. Um, what I can tell you is that Courtney and Coy did not participate in the settlement. They participated in going to court up to 2020. But since we've come into office, they had no participation in this. And Minister Courtney walked out at midday um, before this issue came up to cabinet and Minister Koi was out of the country with his family. Coming up, GOB says recent tourism festival was a success for San Pedro businesses. Have you seen the advisory that Nemo just posted? There's going to be a storm. Storm? It's not a storm. That's just a little rain. We'll be all right.
thank goodness that was only a simulation. But what if it wasn't? Consider this. You've worked hard building your future, your family, your business, your home. RFNG Insurance has policy options that can protect your most valued assets so that you can focus on what matters most. Include RFNG Insurance in your hurricane prep. Remember, it pays to get it right with RFNG Insurance, a road group company. Inter-Office Basketball League, in memory of the late, great Ian Mariano Sr., gives to you three monster games this Friday night, August 26th, at the Mexico Sporting Complex in Billy City. Yeah. Yeah. Ten Titanic teams have signed up to see who will be awarded in the coveted 2022 IBL Championship ring. If you like it, then you should have put a ring. Game 1 will feature the Belize Coast Guard Belize Board Authority trying to sail past our national defense as they battle against the Belize Defense Force Batsup Power Team. And let's get ready to rumble! Game 2 will be the three-time IBL champions. Rico Black and the Tough Enough Tours, Joseph and Taylor team, going up against the National Sports Council, Belize City Council Squad for Basketball Supremacy. Who won the dance and we stop the police? The Belize Police Group, led by Andrew Bynum Ortiz, will try to arrest the Central Health Customs, led by Glenzie Cooper Lopez in the final game three of the night. Just another level! IBL is back on the block, bigger and better. This Friday night at the Mexico Sporting Complex in Belize City, beginning at 7 p.m. sharp. VIP $7, adults 5 and kids under 12, $3. So bring with the entire family for a night of inter-office basketball, y'all. Sponsors, Venice Home Center, Sprite, Powerade, and Crystal Water. Let's get, let's get it on. I'm on my way to Benny's, where I can get what I need. And save some money After 75 years In any business Nobody, nobody, nobody Do it like Dennis Hello, how may I help you? Anything you need, we got you Whether it's tools or trials Lights and fans, we are serving with a smile Genuine plumbing and electric supply Quality construction supply Heating and air condition 100% Belizean Dennis, hey, celebrating Celebrating 75 years, quality and savings, quality and savings. Taking its name from the venerable father of the nation, the George Price Highway stretches 77 miles from Belize City to Benque Viejo. Originally built in the 1930s, this cross-country highway system is the artery that links Belize to Central America at the western border with Guatemala. That connection facilitates overland trade, supporting Belize's economic development. Winding its way across the scenic countryside, the George Price Highway, from Roaring Creek to Esperanza, has been fully reconstructed to meet international standards, with particular emphasis on road safety. A shorter and hassle-free commute is best enjoyed when everyone obeys the traffic laws. To reduce the number and frequency of road traffic accidents, it means that a seatbelt must be worn at all times and the speed limit observed when traveling along the highway. It also means that pedestrians must use sidewalks and crosswalks where available. Buses should only board and discharge passengers at a designated bus stop. Road safety is everyone's responsibility. It begins with you. Donaldson Filtration Solutions is a company that comes with over a century of innovation and in offering filters for a cleaner world. To keep your machines and equipment running in the toughest conditions, you need filters that work as hard as you do. Donaldson offers hydraulic filters, air filters, fuel filters, lube filters, and anything needed to keep your machine pristine. Come to your nearest West Track Limited store for Donaldson filters and whatever your industrial or trucking needs might be. Summer is coming to an end. So let's end it with a bang. 
Come see kids from all over the country while they take center stage to show off their talent on Open Your Eyes Summerfest 2022. That's right. Mark your calendars Friday, August 26 at 6.30 a.m. at Channel 5 on Coney Drive. Come and start your on in right with kids singing and dancing. Also, come take advantage of great food, entertainment and loads of back-to-school giveaways, including gifts for the first 100 kids who enter the fest. And the best thing of all, entrance is free. So, what are you waiting for? Set your alarm and pencil in that date because Summerfest 2022 is one event you don't want to miss. Since the recent Belize International Music and Food Festival, a first-of-its-kind two-day event in San Pedro, the media has been asking Prime Minister, Tr Prime Minister John Bersenio and Minister of Tourism Anthony Mahler to show where the event was profitable. As Mahler promised a week ago, those figures would be provided. The figures are out. However, it is not clear whether they have been properly audited. News 5's Marion Alley has a report on the overall success of the event. The initial budget for the first ever Belize International Music and Food Festival held in San Pedro on July 30th and 31st was set at $750,000. The final figures that have been released by the Belize Tourism Board this week show that the budget was exceeded by $116,709. BTB's numbers, however, suggest that there was still a profit of almost $52,000. When the media asked Prime Minister John Bersenio earlier this month about the success of the event, he explained that the festival achieved what it set out to do, and that was to create business for San Pedro at the slowest time of year. BTB was there to be able to create a business activity in San Pedro because it is during this time that the tourist season tends to, oui. to go down. It's a, it's a lull. All the um, rooms, they were solidly booked, sold out everything. Um, people out there in their stalls selling their products. They did very well. Some have argued that a majority of attendees were Belizeans from other parts of the country who flocked to the island for the event and that the profit for government is a paltry sum. Business owners, on the other hand, say that they would not have realized those profits were it not for the event. The Belize Music and Food Festival positively impacted St. Pedro Express. It was definitely an increase. We noticed early purchases of tickets heading over to San Pedro. We were quite surprised in the amount of business that we got in. It was almost exclusively from locals. We had to put on extra flights. Business was very, very good because um, there were a lot of people here on the island. And um, we rent all of our golf carts and the gift shop. We had people coming in. So that was very good again. Our resort was sold out. Many of the establishments in town and resorts were pretty much packed. The Belize Food and Music Festival affected my business in such a way that I now have more customers from out district. This was the first time ever that there is a festival where we didn't have to pay for the booth and they gave us three passes for our workers if you needed any more. Well, it was done. We didn't have to worry about signs. They did it for us free. Our menus and they were beautiful. BTB says it will use the profits to create an orange economy fund that will bring together Belizean artists and investments will be made to assist with three music studios in Belize City, Orange Walk and Dangriga. This is to provide artists with greater access to high quality studios to enhance their craft. In addition, through the assistance of an international consultancy, a strategy will be developed to merge Belizean music and tourism. It is something that the Belizean artists who performed at the event will no doubt appreciate for future events. Because of the type of show it was and with the band and very professional, and I had the chance to sing songs that people might not know, some songs that I really, really like. It was a great experience and I just hope that from here it just gets Bigger. We actually built the Belizean segment, so in further future references, I would love to see just Belizean artists. That experience, I, I can't even explain how grateful I am, how appreciative I am of that uh, experience. And 
I can't wait to do it again. There were complaints made about lighting issues, but if the testimonials of the participants quell any of the doubts that people had regarding the success of the festival, then the event is something that we can expect to see again. If you have a small country, for instance, like St. Kitts, that can hold a jazz fest with international um, um, artists, why can't we do the same? Reporting for News 5, I'm Marion Ali. Tracy Panton, the area representative for Albert Division, has broken her silence on the UDP's deep internal divide. Today she spoke with reporters about her position coming out of Saturday's National Party Council meeting. While she was present for the meeting, she says her colleague Patrick Faber is out of the country, but he, but he was assured that he would be able to join virtually. Despite this assurance, Panton says the commitment was not upheld and Faber was not allowed to attend Saturday's meeting. Notwithstanding Faber's absent, Panton says she respects the decision made by the NPC at that meeting. She has chosen to call a ceasefire against party leader Mose Shine Barrow or any other member of the UDP. Indeed, we had a National Party Council meeting on Saturday, last week Saturday, where a number of issues, uh, internal issues, that the party needs to address was raised and discussed. I can't say that all the issues were resolved. But we did, the consensus of the NPC was that we find a way to move forward by addressing some of the issues that are in the public domain in the internal, in internal forums. I say that the, or, I, the original um, motion that was put on the f floor was amended. It was amended based on some suggestions I made and the vice chairman of the party made. In his case, the amendment had to do with creating more regular opportunities for the voices elected, elected and appointed officials to be heard um, at regular meetings of the NPC, um, for more forum, forums for the executive committees in the various constituencies to have a say, a voice um, of what they perceive may be happening in the party and to get clarifications. Um, and I also ask for the inclusion in that motion that we respect and we adhere to the constitution of the party and that we also ensure that decisions of the NPC, who is the highest making decision body, as you know, of the party outside of a national convention be, ad, be binding, um, which it ought to be, based on those amendments and based on agreements by the majority on the floor. I think I may have heard one um, objection. I certainly am prepared to respect the decision made by the NPC. Panton also responded to questions about her removal from the party's Central Executive Committee in favor of Melvin Hewlett, who ran and lost in Fort George for the UDP in 2021. Here's what she told reporters. If I have asked for his removal, no. I have not asked for Mr. Hewlett's removal because the consensus at the NPC, while I share a different view, I didn't... My view is that there were no vacancies for regional leaders because a decision had been taken by the NPC on that matter as it was taken relating to the interim caretakers for the party. The consensus on the floor after lots of discussion and debate was that this motion will apply to moving forward and I have decided that we have far bigger fish to fry. I mean, the national issues are jumping out at us and we are so distracted by what's happening internally that I would not seek to, to you know, force my point or voice my point upon the NPC when a decision has been taken. So you're just going to accept that as is, that change that's been, been made? I have a view. The consensus of the party has a view. I will, ask, I will respect the consensus of the party. 
Pantone also told reporters that she did not take part in her party's protests on Tuesday because she was working in her constituency. She told us that she also had some concerns with the fact that the protest was still being held even after the UDP was denied its application to protest by the police. Today, we asked Prime Minister John Bersenio for his thoughts on the UDP protests and the high cost of fuel and living that protesters marched against. Here is what he told us. They're grandstanding and trying to move attention away from the deep internal divisions that they have. I think you need to get your house in order before you try to do anything. And um, it was a field, as far as I'm concerned, um, a field protest, but they have the right to protest and that's fine. And um, we all recognize, they're not saying anything new. They're not being Columbus here or Einstein. We know the issues, that is why Today, we, for instance, we, we are voting the, the subsidies for bread, the subsidy for, for um, the bus runs, you know, and, and there's another subsidy that we, we've been we're doing. We have the, supply, the, um, the constituency development fund. There are many things that we're doing to try to address those issues. We have cut down the taxes on fuel, but the reality is that we have no control over the cost of the things that come in. Most of the basic foods pay next to zero taxes, so there's not much more that that can be done. I wish I could have a magic one and make it disappear. What we have to do is to continue to work hard, continue to create more opportunities, create more, more jobs, create up, um, help small businesses to prosper. We have the MSME, MSME um, uh, road show that will be on that we have uh, asking people to come in. We're going to train you to be able to run a business successfully. And in some instances, even offer some grant funding. These are the things that that touch the lives of people, it make a fundamental difference. Today we're voting $2 million as a start to develop a thousand lots for the residents of Belize City. That is, has a direct impact. This is how you create wealth with land when you give it, especially to poor people. We're going to start to putting in the, the, the infrastructure. It's going to require much more than $2 million, but with $2 million we can start to be able to provide a thousand lots to the residents of Belize City. After the break, $12 million for emergency repairs following last week's tropical wave. The Belize International Music and Food Festival took place on July 30th and 31st, 2022 at the Sacachispas Field in San Pedro. During the two nights, La Isla Bonita came alive with music, energetic performances and Belize's kaleidoscopic cuisine. Combining international and national performances, the festival brought together 15 well-known and up-and-coming local artists alongside 12 international artists. Local artists had the opportunity to develop their skills and elevate their performances and open the festival on both nights. To kickstart, the event was the food festival with 21 vendors from San Pedro, Key Cocker, Orange Walk and Belize City. Attendees enjoyed an assortment of traditional local cuisine, street food, seafood, natural juices, and mixed drinks. As the sun set, the night became alive with vibrant performances ranging from reggae, Afrobeats, dance hall, soca, punta, to Latin. The two-day festival was held to close in the gap between Belize's high and low tourism seasons. PGIA arrivals, which bring 90% of tourism traffic into Belize, increased by over 20% in July during the weekend of the festival. That represented over 50% an increase versus last year's visitors. As envisioned, the festival fueled economic activity on the island. Close to 9,000 persons attended the concert with around 7,000 estimated visitors to San Pedro between July 28th to the 31st alone. Close to $5.4 million was pumped into the island community during the festival with transportation, hotels, golf cart rentals, and other establishments, big and small, benefiting from this trickling down effect. From the preparation to the whole festival itself, it was just a great experience. A lot of businesses as well were able to benefit from this music and food festival and the exposure was just simply amazing. For that weekend, I believe everybody was able to make their money and just have an experience of their own to see what a festival is like. 
I mean, Belize never actually had an international, like a huge festival like that, apart from the Costa Maya. It wasn't something that we were able to experience, and I think we should continue that. The Belize Music and Food Festival positively impacted St. Pedro Express. It was definitely an increase. We noticed early purchases of tickets heading over to San Pedro. And over the weekend, the 29th and 31st, there was a significant increase in traffic here. Typically, we wouldn't see locals traveling during the slow season over to San Pedro. So the Belize Music Festival really did create an economic boost for us. The business was very, very good because um, there were a lot of people here on the island. and. Um, we rent all of our golf carts and the gift shop. We had people coming in, so that was very good again. And I thank um, BTB for that um, festival they did here in San Pedro. Good, great. The overall experience on the island, I believe it was a complete success. Our resort was sold out. Many of the establishments in town and resorts were pretty much packed. It was an overwhelming really busy during the time that it's normally always really slow. As a resort, you know, we would definitely, I mean, we look forward to it next year. Um, and I believe everyone also in San Pedro or wherever, it will be hosted again, you know, so it, it was positive and I believe that it should continue. The Belize Food and Music Festival affected my business in such a way that I now have more customers from out district. It was a success, I must say. I was very privileged to be there and um, it was a good turnout. Uh, sales wise and well for my staff because they all made a little extra so we all won something. Our experience at the food festival was amazing. There was a tremendous huge crowd out there that our staff managed to handle. At the end of the day it was successful and it was worth it. My experience at the food festival was a fantastic evening full of Belizeans, we saw people that we haven't seen for a long time, but at the bottom line, it was such a beautiful event. The weekend was a very good weekend for all San Pedranos. The restaurant here at Delvis was packed with Belizeans and Americans, and at the festival, we sold out both nights. Well, in this post-COVID economy, it's really hard to know what to expect but we were quite surprised in the amount of business that we got in. It was almost exclusively from locals. We had to put on extra flights. Before COVID, we used to travel every hour between San Pedro and Belize Municipal. We had to go back to an hourly service to, to handle the load, which was very surprising. I am excited and can't wait for next year to offer our business for the food festival. I just want the public to know that this was the first time ever that there is a festival where we didn't have to pay for the booth and they gave us three passes for our workers if you needed any more well it was done we didn't have to worry about signs they did it for us free our menus and they were beautiful kudos to btv and thank you again for for the festival man it was it was fun and it was just a great way to expose our business. The grocery stores were busy, the taxis were busy, the golf cart rentals were all busy. It definitely had a positive effect on the San Pedro economy, which affects everything. As, tur as tourism, the money goes in kind of at the top of the economy and then it trickles down. So it's definitely had a positive effect. In addition to boosting local tourism, the Belize International Music and Food Festival will further contribute to Belize's tourism and creative sectors. The profits from the festival will be used to create the Orange Economy Fund that will bring together Belize's cultural and artistic talents to strengthen the local economy. With this in mind, an investment will be made in three music studios in Belize City, Orange Walk and Dangriga. This will ensure Belizean artists have access to a high-quality studio to enhance their music and raise the level of their craft. An international consulting firm has also been contracted to examine and prepare a strategy to merge Belizean music and tourism for the benefit of the artists and strengthening of our tourism product. 
the festival helped me a lot more working with William Neal, very strict and direct with what he wanted and he made sure that we execute at the end of the day. So to the day I'm a very more confident performer, I must say, after this festival. In regards with this show, it was a another step up for the Belizean artists, not only myself, right? Because what happened is that we what we did the rehearsals every Sunday at Bird's Isle. I believe that the preparations that we made to make this festival happen were very crucial and I think it helped in the sense that we got to work closely with the band and the backup dancers. For me, what helped me the most was the choreography because, you know, I'm a little stiff sometimes on stage. I don't know, a dancer, but practicing a couple times. I missed a couple practice, but even the, the times that I did win actually helped me to be a little more loose, you know, getting tips from other artists and getting tips from the dancers and William and Stump actually helped me a lot. Yes, it's nice to have international artists on our, our venues, but I mean like we actually built the Belizean segment. So in further future references, I would love to see just Belizean artists. At one point I found myself standing there like, wow, I'm really doing this. You know, and, and the minute I stepped on that stage, the, the crowd was like, woo. I was glad to interact with the fans. It was a great experience, and I just hope that from here it just gets bigger and greater. This enhanced my performances because I haven't performed ever so long ever since COVID came, right? So, I mean, like, it was a stepping game for us again. Because of the type of show it was and with the band and very professional, and I had the chance to sing songs that people might not know. Some songs that I really, really like, you know, that, that isn't for like a jerk fest or, or those kind of show, like, you know. I had the chance to actually deliver a good performance with dancers and sing on my heart. Um, you know, I capture a different kind of audience. Them as the promoters, BTB and, and Jan Marsden and Alpha Mention William Neal, Joseph Stamp Allen, who came together and wanted the best for us. One night we felt what it felt to feel the way international artists always, you know, felt. So that experience, I, I can't even explain how grateful I am, how appreciative I am of that uh, experience. And I can't wait to do it again. The first Belize International Music and Food Festival was coordinated by the Belize Tourism Board in partnership with the National Institute of Culture and History, Protected Areas Conservation Trust, and the San Pedro Town Council, along with a host of sponsors. Savor the rhythm of Belize at the next Belize International Music and Food Festival. Make your summer better. Over $35,000 in cash and prizes with Smart Summer Sweepstakes. Here's how you can enter for a chance to win. Purchase any device, sign up for a Smart Postpaid, Broadband or VoIP plan, use $50 or more regular prepaid credit, do a SIM swap or text to the short code. You win, 8946. And in the body of the message, enter the number of entries you would like to purchase. Each entry costs only 50 cents. Don't waste any time. You can be the winner of weekly prizes starting July 1st. All methods give you more chances to win. Airline tickets, overnight stays at numerous resorts, cash prizes, gift certificates, and much, much more. One lucky person will win the grand prize of a $10,000 shopping spree courtesy court and smart. Promotion ends September 16, 2022. So make your summer better by getting in the race to win with Smart Summer Sweepstakes. Smart, bringing people together. Summer is coming to an end, so let's end it with a bang. Come see kids from all over the country while they take center stage to show off their talent on Open Your Eyes Summerfest 2022. That's right. Mark your calendars Friday, August 26 at 6.30 a.m. at Channel 5 on Coney Drive. Come and start your on in right with kids singing and dancing. Also, come take advantage of great food, entertainment and loads of back-to-school giveaways 
including gifts for the first 100 kids who enter the fest. And the best thing of all, entrance is free. So what are you waiting for? Set your alarm and pencil in that date because Summerfest 2022 is one event you don't want to miss. One cabinet met on August 19th in the wake of a tropical wave that passed over the country a day or so earlier. It approved $12 million to be used for repairing highways and feeder roads that, feeder roads that were damaged by the weather system. This morning, during the sitting of the House of Representatives, Cayo South Area Representative Julius Espat, Minister of Infrastructure Development and Housing, tabled a motion for supplementary appropriations in that amount to cover the cost of emergency repairs. Mr. Speaker, it is estimated that as much as seven inches of rainfall was experienced during this time. It took the weather disturbance to pass. This caused two major culverts on the Philip Golson Highway to be washed out and several others compromised, thus creating a hazard to motorists and road users. There were reports of as much as 18 inches of water crossing the Philip Golson Highway at various locations that have never, never historically flooded, as well as reports of feeder and farm roads across the country being impassable after the rains subsided. Entire villages in the north were underwater and thus prevented many residents from continuing with their daily lives. The lack of adequate drains and culverts, Mr. Speaker, is a major contributor to the problem of flooding. Perhaps these are possible signs that the effects of climate change will be a greater challenge for us at the MIDH and maybe for the country on a whole, in fact, for the world on a whole, as we go forward. The MIDH, which is the Ministry of Infrastructure Development and Housing District Road Maintenance Units, were quick to respond to notifications of flooding and damage to restore public access, protect infrastructure and alleviate impacts to those affected. The teams conducted their inspections and made recommendations. Immediately following the thunderstorms, personnel from the Ministry of Infrastructure Development and Housing were dispatched to various parts of the country to evaluate the extent of damages to roads, drains and culverts that were affected by the tropical wave. During the House meeting today, Minister Espat specified the various locations as well as the monies earmarked for the respective repair work. An assessment exercise was conducted after the weather disturbance, which was discussed with the Ministry of Finance and presented to Cabinet. Twelve million Belize dollars were made available for damage repairs on our major feeder roads. Even though this sum could never thoroughly address the vast needs of the impacted area. In particular, the requested funding for these emergency works will be primarily used for, and I will state the following. In general, of the $12 million requested here in the House, the Belize District has been allocated $6.7 million, the Orange Walk District, $4 million and the Corozal District, $1.25 million, all in Belize dollars. I humbly ask that the area reps from the other districts don't get offended, but this request was specifically for the areas that were impacted with the flood that passed on August 17 and 18. But the ministry will continue to work in all the other districts because we still have the funds that was budgeted originally, and we will continue our work as we have always done. So let's just work as a team and support the guys in the north that really had these problems. Earlier this week, senior public officers employed at the audit department wrote to CEO Rolando Zatina expressing serious concerns about the manner in which that aspect of government is being managed. This was in the absence of an Auditor General since Dorothy Bradley retired from the post in 2021. 
But the news today is that the former head of the department is being offered a two-year contract to return to her office, much to the chagrin of the opposition and the public service union. This morning, PM Briseño introduced a motion recommending Bradley's appointment to the post. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this honorable host recommends that Ms. Dorothy Bradley be appointed to act as Auditor General for a period of two years with effect for the first day of September 2022. This motion has a recommendation of the Cabinet. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as you all know, the, um, Ms. Dorothy Bradley has been an exemplary public officer and has done, again, an exceedingly good job while she was the Auditor General. And the time came for, for, for her retirement. And um, since then, we've been trying to, to find the, we believe, the appropriate person to, 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 um, to take over the position. But it was a general consensus that it would be best to bring her, um, offer another two-year contract um, so that then she can then take those two years to continue the work of the Auditor General, but at the same time to prepare a smooth transition to finding um, or to um, training within the staff, um, somebody that can take over the post of Auditor General. I urge both sides of the House to um, to support this um, disappointment, um, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, I have to point out to the Honorable House and to Belizeans that the president of the Public Service Union vehemently objects to Ms. Bradley being given another a contract on the basis that there are many qualified public officers that can assume that position and qualified Belizeans outside of the public service. And further, the president of the PSU does not paint the picture that the prime minister paints. In fact, he says that Mrs. Bradley's tenure was filled with grievances and that she did a terrible job as Auditor General, and there are many outstanding grievances from her time that disenfranchised public officers. So the opposition cannot support this. I believe this is a lazy approach by the government. Buckle down, find a suitable Auditor General and proceed. On Tuesday, the President of the Public Service Union spoke candidly with reporters. He said that the Audit Department has never been led by someone who is aptly qualified for the job, including former Auditor General Dorothy Bradley. It's going to be corrected here, but I don't know that we've ever had somebody with the proper certification to head that department. And the former the general was not a, a certified uh, um, auditor or, or, or a certified CPA. Um, the current uh, is not, and I don't know that anybody within the department has uh, is a certified auditor um, with the requisite uh, knowledge, experience, and qualifications to head that department. Um, the government excuse will be that no certified uh, uh, public accountant or certified auditor would want to come and work for the government for the salary that is being paid. That, that, that I'm pretty quite sure that would be the argument. But when you have a budget that hovers uh, um, in the vicinity of, uh, I believe, uh, uh, $2 billion. Uh, costs 
of ensuring that the office of the Auditor General is properly staffed to the right people um, should that be an issue. When we return, over $150 million in supplementary allocations for 2022 and 2023. But first, here's the weather forecast with data from the Belize Met Service. Club 501 Belize presents its first annual theater and comedy production, Wahilaris Kixi Comedy Night. Returning back on stage in our jewel after 40 years, we bring to you Ray Gongara. Trust me, oh no, no one miss this year. Althea Leslie. No Tory Day, you know, but you got to come. You got to come get the Tory, Tory Day. And all the way from Jamaica for the first time in Belize, Owen Blacker. Alice. I've been all over the Caribbean region and I have never been to Belize. Can you believe it? It is unbelievable. Bliss Center for the Performing Arts comes alive for two nights only on Friday, August 26th and Saturday, August 27th. Showtime is at 8 p.m. Belize time. Early arrival is suggested. Come experience a great night of comedy and laughter hosted by William Neal. All proceeds from this event will be used to support the youths in Belize through projects sponsored by Optimist Club 501 Belize. Tickets can be purchased in Belize from Miss Darlene Gentle at 615-1601. Reserve tickets, 35 Belize dollars. General tickets, 25 Belize dollars. And local online streaming, 20 Belize dollars. For international streaming tickets, contact Miss Bernadette Briggs at 858-442-4594. Or Miss Vanessa Jenkins Young at 347 764 8123. Cost for international streaming is $20 US. Live streaming will be aired only on Friday, August 26th at 8 p.m. Belize time. And thereafter, rebroadcasted on Sec9 live streaming for a limited time only. What well, hilarious kicks a comedy night. Well, make sure you get on the tickets. Make sure you get on the ticket, yeah? See you on the later. <laughs> Sponsored by Love FM, Belizean Dreams Resort, and Garifuna Flavor, a taste of Belize. When all hope is lost and the days ahead look grim, we find ourselves looking for someone to shake things up, rescue us, and point us in the right direction. What if the one we've been waiting for has been here all along? Join us for our new series, Troublemaker, as we learn about a man who wasn't afraid to stand up for what's right to make this world a better place. Belize Tropical Hemp Company Limited introduces its new CBD products. CBD milk chocolate and CBD dark chocolate Vegan, gluten-free with no GMO. CBD oil, 100% natural, provides many health benefits such as relieving pain and anxiety and improved heart health. Hemp cigarettes come in a pack of 10 natural hemp smokables. CBD seaweed, natural and refreshing, rich in vitamins and minerals. All products are produced and packaged by Belize Tropical Hemp Company Limited. Can't get a mannequin for this man, really? Well, son, if I never lend you the two thousand dollars to buy the kids' computer and the book, I may have the money for buy my mannequin. It's definitely better to borrow from the bank than from your friends or relatives. This way, all you owe is money. Would you like me to turn around? That would be good. Turn on, turn on, turn on. Take advantage of the back to school promotion currently being offered by the Belize Bank. Biodegradable 
plastics. When talking about plastic, don't you always hear people say that this plastic or that plastic is biodegradable, eco-friendly, environmentally friendly, green or even ecological? Well, the truth is that these words and many others like them are often used to give the impression that the product is better for the environment. When shopping, the terms to look for are bio-based, compostable or environmentally degradable plastics because they are tested against specific standards to ensure that they are broken down with minimal impacts to the environment. But what does biodegradable really mean? To put it simply, it is the breakdown of something into water, carbon dioxide and biomass by the action of living organisms, usually bacteria or fungus. However, people call some plastics biodegradable, but they never fully break down because they still contain plastics made from petroleum or inorganic material. The plastics just break down into tinier pieces called microplastics, which then enter the food cycle through the ingestion by animals that people eat. Don't be fooled, check your labels. Click on the link below to see what you can do to help end the nightmare of single-use plastics. I'm Alison Castillo and now you know. Download the SmartStream app on the Android Play Store and create your account to get access to movies and stream at home or on the go. Prepaid customers can purchase regular data packages or get a discounted rate on a special SmartStream package by dialing 7737. Postpaid customers will be billed monthly. Never miss a movie again with SmartStream. KTV. Vote for your favorite KTV contestant by texting the number of votes followed by a space, then your contestant's number, and send it to smart code 5885. Here are this week's contestants. Everybody wanna feel like we forget the troubles and rough with me. You know, feel our reggae music sweet. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I wish nothing but down. Closer to forever And there is nothing I can say on my Remember, voting ends on Sunday at midnight And don't forget to tune in every Tuesday Live, only on 5 As we told you earlier, the government of Belize will be spending $12 million on flood relief and $38 million U.S. million to settle the Belize International Services Limited debt. Both of these expenses were brought to the, ho to the House of Representatives today as supplementary allocation bills. These two bills are now the second and third such allocation being requested by the Bersenu administration for the current fiscal year. P.M. Bersanio contends, however, that these are monies that are genuinely needed. Here is his justification. What is important to point out is that unlike the previous government or governments um, that um, constantly used to, um, to, to break the law, we are following the law. I mean, this, these are monies that are genuinely needed for this country. Um, we could sit down and say, well, we have no more money and, we s and sit there and do nothing. We believe that we need to do the work. We believe we have a, a, a not only a legal but a moral responsibility to, the, to this country to be able to move it forward. What you need to look, I think, what's more important is see the development that have been taking place in such a short time, how we have turned around the country, how um, the, the economy, how we are getting more people working and, and more opportunities. We're still going through a difficult time and we understand that, but a lot of the issues that are being brought up by the, by the um, by the opposition are things that we have no control over. We import most of what we, we eat and we, we use, and the prices are continuing to go up worldwide. The point that I like to make is that the, um, the $38.25 million US, of which $11.5 million is going to be paid in Belize dollars, um, is, is final, um, and that, that's it. 
we don't owe them anything. They're not going to come later on, oh, you owe me court fees, uh, or my liar fees, or nothing. That's it. We will settle um, there. PM Bersenio was also asked for his thoughts on Vulcan material and its proposal for mining near Gales Point, Manatee. The Prime Minister was more open to hearing from the company than other government representatives who have shared on the subject. PM Bersenio noted that while it is a matter that must not be taken lightly or kindly to, there is a process for Vulcan material to share with the relevant authorities. It's a basic right. Anybody can, can come and buy land once the owner is prepared to, to sell. Now, whether they would get the necessary approvals, no, that's, that's, that's another matter. I think the, the um, Minister of Natural Resources has been very clear, clear on his position. And I'm certain that should that ever come up, the air representative, um, um, our Minister of Human Development, um, Honorable um, Balderamos, have also, have also said that um, it's uh, something that her um, voters do not um, support. And certainly, um, Myself, as a former Minister of Environment, I would not, um, I don't think it's something I would take lightly or kindly to see that this beautiful mountain just, just, just be destroyed. But we cannot stop any company that wants to come and to invest in Belize. We need to hear them all. You know, just can't say, oh, don't come. We want them to come, but they have to follow our laws, and especially our environmental laws, because we are known as an eco-friendly country. And as such, we're going to do everything possible to protect that um, reputation that we have worldwide. Ten women who took part in a female entrepreneurship program has received seed funding to begin or continue their own small businesses. On Tuesday, the Belize Trade and Investment Development Service, Bell Trade, with support from the Taiwan government, handed over checks valued at $4,000 to each of the women. The money came from the Angel Fund created by Taiwan for this specific program and designed exclusively for women. During the program, the women also received practical advice, advice, tools to identify and take advantage of business opportunities. Taiwanese ambassador to Belize, David Kwan Chao Chen, expressed his hope that the money will help to improve the livelihoods of the recipients. While CEO in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Amalia Mai, explained that there had to be a selection process, and recipient Marta Chalom expressed her gratitude. By granting the angel fund, we hope that more female entrepreneurs in Belize can be supported and be inspired uh, to bravely run their business, uh, thus helps empower women and revive the MSME in Belize. MSMEs, and I think SEO Garcia will speak further on that, were especially hard hit during the pandemic, particularly those headed by women and youth. So many have applied, uh, but we have to be a little selective. And there's always another phase on this project, so keep on trying. I made this sacrifice to, to attend all of this training because um, I had to leave my place. It's like nine, nine and a half miles off the main highway. I have learned so much things during these courses. Um, for example, how to do a business model, financial management training, e equality in women and gender equality. So um, I have gained so many knowledge. A Belize Defense Force soldier who was badly injured during a fatal road traffic accident a week and a half ago is in need of a blood donation to be able to undergo a surgery to repair a broken femur. Corey Martels was among several BDF soldiers returning from a funeral service in the South earlier this month when a deadly collision on the George Price Highway left him with a severe injury to the leg. Of the four victims that were hospitalized at the KHMH, he is the only one who is still admitted to ward. That's because he is in urgent need of a blood transfusion to go through an operation. This afternoon, his mother, Charlotte Gladden, stopped by to request public assistance. He was in the accident last Thursday. 
and he's one of the BDF that got injured. He has the femur that needs to be attended to. And um, we're still waiting for blood. At this moment, we are still at three, three, four blood. So if anybody can assist or help, I'm asking for appeal. He was one of several officers who were injured in this accident. Um, what is his immediate status outside of him needing blood at the moment? Right at this moment, he's under depression. Guys, um, huh. I don't even know how to describe it because it's not a good depression being that, you know, um, he was up ready to do the surgery and now to find out that, you know, it can't be done. So I left him at the hospital in a depression mood, so just asking for prayers as we go along. His broken leg is the only injury he sustained, or is there other injuries that he suffered? No, just the broken leg. Just the broken leg, the femur. What is his blood type, and what is the appeal to the public in respect of trying to um, make this donation? His blood type is a B negative and I'm appealing to anybody out there, anybody, um, you all may not have recognized this picture that was posted but if you all recognize me then you will know that it's my quarry that is in the hospital and needs the blood as urgent as can be. Just ahead, Jada Brown makes Belize proud in women's football. Start your engines now for the National MSME Roadshow, geared towards building the resilience of MSMEs and developing a national MSME directory. Sign up for this three-day event filled with intensive boot camps, presentations, MSME support and formalization clinics, pop-up shops, and more to help you develop and promote your business. The National MSME Roadshow will be in Corozal starting August 24th. Orange Walk, August 31st. Billy City, September 7th. Punta Gorda, September 14th. Key Cocker, September 22nd. Belmopan, September 28th. San Ignacio in San Helena on October 5th. Dan Griga, October 12th. Placencia, October 19th. And closes in San Pedro from October 26th. Learn more and sign up for the National MSME Roadshow by visiting the Bell Trade Facebook page or call or WhatsApp us at 613-5139. And let's get your business on the road. Applying for a Social Security Sickness Benefit? Here's what you need to know. A complete claims package include 1. Sickness claim form fully completed by the claimant and medical doctor. 2. Salaries record form completed by the employer or HR representative. 3. Proof of bank account such as bank book, online banking or statement displaying your name and account number. To submit via email, you need to Take a clear photo or scan of the documents and email to claims at socialsecurity.org.bz. Be sure to include your full name, social security number, and benefit type in the subject line of the email. Deadline to submit is 14 days from your first day of illness. All forms are available on the website at www.socialsecurity.org.bz. Social Security Board, safeguarding you, your family, your future. In 2018, before I was um, diagnosed with um, cervical 4A, stage 4A cancer. First, it was at the size of a grapefruit. That's what the um, doctor told me. The kidney got enlarged. I couldn't do any um, chemotherapy because of the kidney. So I had to do only radiation. And I did my first session of 25. And then when, when I finished with the 25 um, sessions, I went back to check it and she saw four centimeters. And I went back for the next 10 days. And after that, when she checked it again, she said, oh, it's like nothing, like nothing is there. It wasn't painful, it's just a, it's a machine that you go under and they have like a big, like a circular. And that goes five times. You will take five minutes, five minutes to do the radiation, one session. Then you go back the next morning, another session. Well, I personally will highly recommend Galenia Hospital 
because of its good services friendly staff the doctors very caring well I just want to thank them for everything that they have done for me you know the the, the staff and the doctor especially dr. Jamie because she was my doctor for the radiation no? Dwayne Moody, Isani Cayetano, Marion Alley, Paul Lopez. Your News 5 police teams do whatever it takes. Go wherever they need to go so you can catch the story wherever you are, whenever you want, on whatever device. Channel 5 believes on television, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Because news is now everywhere, all the time. And so are we. Make your summer better. Over $35,000 in cash and prizes with Smart Summer Sweepstakes. Here's how you can enter for a chance to win. Purchase any device, sign up for a smart postpaid, broadband, or VoIP plan, use $50 or more regular prepaid credit, do a SIM swap, or text to the short code. You win, 8946. And in the body of the message, enter the number of entries you would like to purchase. Each entry costs only 50 cents. Don't waste any time. You can be the winner of weekly prizes starting July 1st. All methods give you more chances to win. Airline tickets, overnight stays at numerous resorts, cash prizes, gift certificates, and much, much more. One lucky person will win the grand prize of a $10,000 shopping spree courtesy court and smart. Promotion ends September 16, 2022. So make your summer better by getting in the race to win with Smart Summer Sweepstakes. Smart, bringing people together. Women representing Belize internationally in football does not make the news every day. But we have one person to feel proud of tonight in that discipline. Jada Brown graduated from Galen University last year and is now enrolled at Campbellsville University, where she plays football with the university's Tigers football team in the state of Kentucky. The Football Federation of Belize, FFB, wrote on its Facebook page that it worked along with the women's department to begin one of the biggest initiatives expected to benefit women's football in Belize. The Federation invites all female athletes who wish to become professional pre players while continuing their education to start to play from an early age and to work hard at excelling that they would be able to earn scholarships from, from universities at the United States. There is also basketball news tonight with the first of its kind national basketball tournament held over the weekend for youth in Belize City. The Ministry of Youth and Sports hosted the two-day event for under-15 and under-18 youth who competed for cash prizes and scholarships for secondary and tertiary levels. The tournament marked the culmination of two months of competitions for males and females in the two categories. Minister of Sports Rodwell Ferguson was at the event. For many, many years, sports have been neglected in this country. And I'm trying to revive it and revitalize it. Our country needs sports. We are trying to reduce the crime in this country. If we can engage them in sports, then we're going to reduce crime. And that's the news. Tonight's broadcast is available in both text and streaming video at channel5belize.com. You can also connect with us on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news5live. I'm Sabrina Daly. Thanks for joining us. And from all of us here at News 5, please remember to wash your hands, keep your social distance, and stay safe. Good night.